Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our weekly investor update. I'm your host, Rachel Curlew, AVP of Investment Banking. We're happy to bring you another installment of our weekly uploads. Today's video will be focused on Jamaica Tees Limited, a company recently covered on our channel, specifically Jam Tees updated results, which were published following last week's update. Joining me on the panel today is Jamaica Tees CEO John Mafood who will be sharing some insights on the company and the information being discussed today. If you're a fan of the content, then don't forget to subscribe. Also, hit the bell to stay up to date with the channel. We upload content like this every week. Also, if you want to embark on your first investment journey, you should take that first step with Mayberry. Follow us on social media to learn more about how you can get started today. So, let's get into the presentation. We were here, as mentioned, just last week discussing Jam T's full year performance ending September of last year. Since then, they have updated, they have released their first quarter results. So um, we thought it was prudent to keep the momentum going and update shareholders on what's going on with the company. And, you know, as I mentioned, we have John here to share management view, view on the company and the outlook for the next 12 months. So let's take a look. We're seeing here where revenues jumped 12% for the quarter to $655 million. Their cost of sales, however, increased at a faster pace at 15%. So we're still seeing here that they're still experiencing the effects of the logistics issue. So um, consequently, their gross profit increased marginally by 12% to $149 million. We are also seeing that the company is still experiencing unreal, unrealized losses through its subsidiary QWI. They reported a loss of $69 million relative to a gain of $163 million for the prior year. So we'll definitely get a chance to ask John a little later what our management's view on this. Their expenses improved marginally by 3%. After considering finance costs and taxes, the company booked a net loss of $14 million relative to a gain of $167 million for the prior year period. Profit attributable to shareholders um, was, a sorry, was $27 million relative to $113 million last year. This translates to an earning EPS earnings per share of one cent relative to five cents reported the prior year. Their balance sheet still remains strong. Their asset base grew by ten percent to four point eight billion relative to um four point three billion and their shareholders equity declined nine percent to three point four billion. Let's see how the stock has performed in light of its trailing performance. We're seeing here where Jam T closed a period at $2.45 with a relatively rich PE of 49 times compared to its trailing earnings of $107 million and the junior market PE, average PE of about 15 to 16 times. So I'll now turn over to Mr. Mafood so we can discuss further and get a feeling of what investors can expect for the next 12 months. So over to you, John. Again, thanks for being here on the program today. We really appreciate you taking out the time to address our shareholders. Good morning, Rachel. Thank you for having me. Um, so the main sort of main drivers of the results of Jamaican teas are uh, the, actually the manufacturing side, uh, which is uh, Jamaican teas, and as you said, the investment side of QWI, uh, and the company owns approximately 44% of QWI. So um, in the first quarter, um, it, the results are somewhat reminiscent of the last quarter um, of um, the prior year. Um, so up to the end of September, moving into December, it's sort of a trend. Uh, and the reason for that, the reason is, is twofold. One, on the manufacturing side, as you said, um, had to do with logistics. And those logistics meant, uh, uh, the issue really was that in uh, 
2022, we had serious challenges in obtaining raw materials for our uh, manufacturing process, especially in the early part of the year. In, in the March to April time frame, we were out of stock. We were not able to deliver to customers and disappointing customers. And in an effort to uh, correct that, we, were tr we tried to buy as much inventory as possible. And um, the result of that, unfortunately, meant that um, the, all of that extra inventory, instead of coming when it was ordered for the first part of the year, it all came later on from the mid to the, the, the last part, mm -hmm. which meant effectively that we were severely overstocked. We are now carrying 200 million more in inventory than we did in the previous year. And on top of that, the cost of that inventory was very high because of the freight costs. So um, that is um, unfortunately what a lot of manufacturers in Jamaica had experienced. Um, and so the, the result is that uh, in order to correct that over um, the excess inventory, we have, you know, obviously curtailed purchasing and the sales in the first quarter this year and and the second quarter probably to, to March will see the results of us working off those inventories um, at a, a, a lower margin, um, but obviously generating cash at the same time. Uh, and so... My expectation is that, and, and also the uh, freight rates have come down back to the pre-COVID level. So um, again, what we will like to see, uh, not just for us, but for most manufacturing companies, is that 2023 will see an improvement in margins and a reduction in, um, in inventory levels. Uh, better working capital management and so on. So my sense is that um, from about the third quarter onwards, we will see an improvement in margins um, back to where they were um, and improvement in profits. We, we should also um, mention that, you know, because our company is, primary, is most, mostly an export company, um, we, we have a different set of challenges than companies that only manufacture for uh, the domestic market. Um, exporters are impacted by the movement in the foreign exchange rate. Um, and and the, the good thing from the, uh, the country standpoint is that the foreign exchange rate uh, strengthened in 2022. It started out at 155, 156. It ended up nearer to 150. Of course, now we're seeing it go back the other way. But the, yeah. when when the dollar when the dollar revalues, um, it means that you get less dollars for your sales, less Jamaican dollars, which again uh, squeezes your margins. And, and, and so we experienced again in, in, in this period and previous periods foreign exchange losses. With the dollar coming back to the 155 level, which is where it started 2022, that, will, um, that problem will, will no longer be there. So um, I'm optimistic that's the problem we face with the manufacturing. You know, QWI uh, is one of the typical investment companies. We invest in a broad range of stocks in Jamaica and in the US. Uh, we know the Jamaican stock market has declined from, what was it, a high of 430,000 down now to 335,000. Um, and, and, and we have taken a beating. We have made the decision to hold the stocks um, and ride the, um, the downturn because we believe the stocks we have are good stocks. And um, investors will also know that when you take pretty good, pretty large positions in, in, in good stocks in, in this Jamaican stock market, it's hard to come in and out, you, you know, uh, quickly. So you generally hold the stocks that you believe are good. And I think 
we are seeing some of the results of companies recently posted that shows some improvements in the in the results for the 2023. Um, so my expectation is that we we believe we will see some um, improvement, not massive improvement, but some improvements in the Jamaican stock market. We are seeing improvements in the U.S. stock market. So I don't foresee any further losses for QWI for this year. Um, and, you know, the sort of frustrating thing is when you look again at most of these investment type companies, the book value is running is way ahead of the market price. So our market price might be 65 cents or 63 cents. The book value is a dollar, fifteen dollar, sixteen. There's a massive discount, and uh, we have to think about as as uh, managers of the company, you know, how to take advantage, how to manage that big discount, how to reduce it. So that's um, my comments on on that part of it. A question for me, John. We um QWI. So you're saying your position is to hold for the um the next twelve months. So we can expect no um rebalancing of the portfolio or no restriction on investments in particular sectors or the international market. Uh, well, the international market has picked up. Uh, we have we have uh, put some more investments in in the U.S. stock market. Uh, but I, our position is that uh, the stocks, the domestic stocks we hold are, are good stocks and we're going to hold those. So if there is an increase in investment, it will be overseas. Okay, noted. And are there any opportunities in the market right now that you're going to capitalize on? Well, you know, I think um, you, will, you will know and, and uh, your listeners will know that some companies are having some fantastic um, uh, results, 138 student living, um, Wisinko, uh, even although uh, uh, Carreras tends to be um, under, undervalued, um, they had decent results, um, supporting a much higher price than $8. Um, and um, the Honey Bond, I mean, we're seeing good mm -hmm. stock performance and I, my own personal sense is that people are going to start realizing that there are some stocks that are truly undervalued and shouldn't be beaten up like this. I mean, one three eight student living, I don't understand why the market keeps on pushing it down. And Wisinko for the first time in uh, since it's um, going on the market really just is really well below its PE. So my feeling is you know, as I said, a personal level, um, there are good stocks to buy um, locally. Some of those we have. Agreed on all points. You know, I did get a chance to go through some of the results, and I agree. Companies have been releasing solid results, so we're definitely aligned with the local market. Um, can we get an update on the spin-off of Caribbean Dreams? What's the intended timeline on this public offering? And Will jam tea shareholders get a benefit in the form of a dividend species? You know, we have gone a long way in, in preparing the company, um, developing a prospectus. Um, we are at the last stages now of um, having all the regulatory um, requirements for the company to operate. Uh, again, for a manufacturing company, there are a, a number of approvals that you have to have um, a manufacturing status. You have to be able to export to the U.S. You have to have U.S. Regu um, regulations um, complied with in order to export duty-free. You have to have uh, other approvals for exporting to CARICOM. So we are at that last stage now and believe that the company can start operating uh, around April 1, and um, once it is operational, we will then confer with um, uh, our brokers and bankers and, and uh, of course, the stock exchange to ensure that we can move relatively quickly to, a, to an IPO. Um, 
the company will be a subsidiary of Jamaican Teas, um, but the shares will be uh, uh, offered to the public. Um, my hope is that the way we will structure it will provide benefits um, and additional benefits to the stockholders of Jamaican Teas. Um, in, in terms of offering shares of some in some way to them. All right, that's amazing. So investors stay tuned for it coming soon and you will definitely be benefiting. Um, John, do you have any plans to um any further plans rather to spin off any other business segments? Well the, the only other business of um you know of any significance is our real estate business. We own um, close to a, a near near a billion dollars of real estate, and um, it, most of it is commercial real estate um, that is uh, leased um, or owned or, or used. And um, we are also in the market now for a new location for our factory to expand it. It's uh, we operate from two locations. We have outgrown both. And so we are in the market to, to acquire another uh, factory and land, uh, and that will be added to the portfolio of real estate. So it's possible that once we get the, so hopefully the successful launch of, uh, of Caribbean Dreams, mm -hmm. um, our results go back to normal. Uh, QWI is performing again. We can start looking at the possibility of a real estate company, not a developer, but uh, an investor um, and, and, you know, and um, renter. Okay, perfect. You heard it first here, investors. Um, John, the real estate project at Belvedere Road he indicated that um, you had a completion date of next month. Is it still on track? Um, probably not next month, but it, yeah. it's within the next few months. Uh, okay. We have a lot of money tied up in that project. so. Uh, we we have financed it internally, so you know we are anxious to um to start selling. Okay, great. So um, John, I want to say thank you for having us on the program. It was really insightful. Um, our shareholders, I'm sure, appreciated this update on the company and the outlook for the next twelve months. So um, guys, we can look out for a potential IPO of Carbon Dreams. Let's see how QWI's performance um, plays out um, with John's um, strategy of holding. And um, finally, let's see how the real estate, let's see um, when that completes and how it affects the financials. And that's it for today. I'd like to thank our viewers for tuning in. Your support is always appreciated. I would also like to thank Mr. Mahfoud for sharing his insight on the company today. If you're curious about our updates on our virtual investor forum, then find us on social media. We share our live stream dates and upcoming guests on our social media pages. So give us a follow and stay on top of all things forum related. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Maber Investments Limited, and click the bell to receive all notifications. Keep safe and remember, wise investors, slow and steady wins the race. Thank you. Oh.